So Dave, firstly, how much are you enjoying being in the Scottish camp? You must be learning all the time. No, it's amazing, loving every moment of it. Um, as I said previously, the whole experience is going too quickly for my liking. Um, but now it's, you know, you're learning off coaches, players, you know, players at the top of the game. And it's just a really amazing culture to be part of. A win against England, but a missed opportunity against Wales. Must be pretty disappointing, that was it? Yeah, it was. You know, with England, first off, a really, really good team performance, I think. Um, collectively, anyway. But then Wales, you know, we're still kicking ourselves, I think, at that. It was, it was there to be won, irrespective of decisions that were made on the field. So it was a sore one to take, but we're focusing purely on Ireland now. That's in the past. So on to the next one. Let's go back. We'll have to go back to the England game. The debut you made. Describe that feeling coming on the Calcutta Cup, honestly. It's, it's, it's surreal. Like, Twickenham is such a big stadium and it being empty and the whole lead up to it, you almost don't have time to think. Uh, it wasn't until after the game that you you know, you know realise that this is a moment that you've dreamed about and then you finally achieved it. It's Yeah, it was, it was surreal. You can't really put it into words. Um, but, I mean, as a first cap, you couldn't ask for a better game to be part of and it's something I'll remember forever and I'm sure when it's all over I'll have a few beers with my mates and, and celebrate it and talk about it all over again. Within minutes coming on you put a toji on his backside you can't have been too nervous. I don't think you've got time to be nervous you just you're thinking about your role and, and you know you're here on merit and you just go and execute your role I guess there's you're so caught up in the game. You it maybe helps not having a crowd there, but you know you're just eager to get on. And once you're on, you just purely think about your role. And how much did you pay Stuart Hogg to lift the trophy? Or what was the conversation there? <laughs> uh, well, I, I was just again. It all happened so fast. I remember Cam was up there, and he was like, "Chair, get up here," and uh, talk, tootled over and. Yeah, as I've said already, I've thanked him countless times for it. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it. But no, an amazing woman and, and I'll treasure that for the rest of my days. And was it straight on to the family in the changing room and FaceTime? Yeah, family and girlfriend on the Zoom. It's when I got my cap and um, now what a moment. And I think I might get it framed and stick it up on the wall at some point. It's, so I can look back and think, yeah, I did achieve it. Rightly so. Moving on to Ireland on Sunday, side you haven't beaten since 2017. Are you still confident going into it, Dave? Yeah, of course we are. I think, you know, the squad's in a great place. Uh, you know, the England game showed that. The Wales game, it was again, we said it was there to be won. Um, so why shouldn't we be confident? We've been playing well. And um, I think confidence is, is key going into these things. You, you, you've got to back yourself and, and to go out there and win. There's no point in going into something half-hearted, so that's that's our approach. We're going in and we're wanting to win. You obviously won the game line against England. You maybe didn't against Wales. Surely that's going to maybe decide the game against Ireland. No, oh, yeah. I mean, the Irish provinces have been going very well. They're obviously a very physical side. Um, we know that they've got threats at the breakdown and 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 real good strike runners. So the game line and breakdown, I think, are going to be the most important areas in the game. And the word on Finn Russell, we don't know what he's going to do. Do you? Uh, occasionally. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, he's, he's at the top of his game, isn't he? He's, he's a bit of a magician and he can pull anything off. Um, you know, he's, he, Finn is Finn. I think that's all you can really say. And what's he like to work with, Dave? Oh, great bloke. Great bloke. Um, giving a bit of a jip after uh, Edinburgh drawn racing in Europe, so... Nah, he's a great guy and uh, on and off the pitch, he's a real asset to the squad. A win for you guys on Sunday and you're right back in the championship, aren't you? Definitely, definitely. I mean, that's our target. You know, we're, we're going in wanting to win and and the rest of the games will take care of themselves. We can only control our game and, and we'll see what happens. You've pretty much upset the odds throughout your career. So surely you're looking to win a starting jersey on the Scotland team, even though you're on the bench at the moment? Well, I take it. <laughs> Every game as it comes, it's, 
you know, you can't think too too far ahead of yourself. Um, for me, the focus is purely on Ireland and, and what happens after that happens. It's, it's Ireland first and then we'll see what happens. And is it just a case when you get on Sunday, you do your job firstly, but you're trying to add, what's the biggest thing you're trying to work on when you get on the pitch? I think when you're coming off the bench, it's, it's bringing energy. Um, you want to try and get into the game as soon as you can, but I've always said you don't want to try and do too much. I think you can. It's nice to get a touch or a line out or a scrum to get you into the game, but you don't want to try and force anything. And it's about just bringing energy and doing your role, as you said. Do you think, even in the short time you've been in the squad, your team's getting better and better? Hundred um, percent. Boys are gelling more with each other. Uh, you know, line out and scrum, you don't have a huge amount of time to work on these things when you're in camp. So the longer you are there, the, the slicker these things run and, you know, the better you get to know the boys that you're working with. So 100% we're getting better. And, and that's, I guess, what you aim to do in a championship is continue to improve. And is the, you said the confidence was high. Do you guys really believe, I know you'll say one game at a time, you can go on and win this championship? I think so. You know, why shouldn't we? We've uh, we've gone well, really, in our first two games. Although, as I said, Wales slipped away from us. But why shouldn't we? I think we can win it. You've got to go out there with the attitude to do so. If if you are going to actually do it, it's like I kind of summed up my career. If, if you didn't, you know, have the drive and desire to do it, you wouldn't. I wouldn't be here today. So you mentioned your career there. Let's take it back ten years. I think you were a time deal. Now you're speaking to me as an international rugby player. Like, just sum that up if you can. It's crazy. I was actually joking today. I should write a book on it and the journey I've been on and the people I've met along the way. <laughs> you can't really. I don't. I'm not sure there's many other people that have had a, a journey like I have. I don't know if even who the oldest cap Scottish player would be. I must be there or thereabouts. But I've just stuck at it really and known in my own believed in myself and and I guess been too stubborn to take no for an answer when it comes to when it comes to rugby. And you always were pretty stubborn from what I've known you. Your time at London Scottish and even in France with Stade Nicor, was there times where you thought, look, I'm gonna have to do something else? Yes. I I think in London um is where it really hit that I was in the championship. I was in my third year and I thought how am I going to get out of this and um, I kept plugging away and it was actually John Dalziel who's now the forwards coach here um, he was down there coaching me and he, he talked about this role at Stade Nisois and he said look it's a bit of a cyber step to go forward so I thought you know why not I've come this far and, and that was that and then I, I got the gig at Edinburgh and continue to work hard and I'm, I'm where I am today so no absolutely there's always moments you doubt yourself and uh, I think everyone goes through that no matter what career path you're in but it's to then you know to realise you can do it and to keep working hard and, and the stubbornness comes through and and it pays dividends at the end of the day. I do remember about a month before you said I'm going to France to play and I sort of like and you know I love my rugby but I was just like what is going on here but I could tell like there was there was definitely a drive in there, which made you thought this is going to work. Yeah, well, I had my moments out there. I uh, love and hate relationship. It was, it was the rugby was uh, different, shall we say? And um, there was no touch judges, and uh, there wasn't a huge amount of rugby played. But in the back of my mind, I knew it was just it was a pathway for me, and and it's just something I had to do and get the head down, get on with it, and enjoy being in the south of France. And when you come back to Edinburgh obviously you played that season how much do you owe to Richard Cockrell and the other staff to get you where you are as well well I think at that level it's it's not just about coaches it's also about players um Ross Ford was there when I was there and I learned a huge amount from him uh he's obviously a pretty experienced guy and <clears throat> we had uh, our little throwing group and I took a lot away from that I really think I've worked on that in the years I've been at Edinburgh and, and developed that and you know Stuart McAnally as well. It's uh, some really experienced guys that you can you can draw in, draw information from and 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 learn and grow your game. So I think that's really the key factor for me.
And did you believe when you were with those guys training with them, you were as good as them? I think so. I remember actually being at club rugby and uh, Rambo was uh, converting to, to hooker and he came down and he was, I was bummed out of the hooker spot. I was like, oh no, here we go. Uh, but I've always believed in myself. Um, I don't necessarily think I have to compare myself to others. I just have my own belief and I think I've shown that I'm capable of playing at this level in, in these last two games that have gone. Be honest, when did you believe becoming a Scottish international was on the cards? Uh, well, I guess Rambo and Fraser Brown's injuries, it was, it was unfortunate for them, but it gave an opening for me and you know, you create your own luck. I've, I've worked long and hard for this opportunity and before the camp was picked, I remember everyone kind of speculating and giving me a stick for it. And, and I just kept my head down. And eventually when I got the call, that was going to be in it. I was, I was over the moon, even though a Scottish don't show too much emotion. Uh, I really was over the moon and it was, yeah, just, and then to get picked and the whole road after that, it was just honestly amazing. You can't really put it in words. And even at 30, do you think you've got more to give and you're going to get better and better? Oh, I'm just a spring chicken. Um, uh, plenty more in the tank for me. Plenty more. Lastly, can I confirm with you, just to clarify, I did sidestep you and go through a gap 10 years ago on the back pitch at Desmond? Um, I thought you said you threw a, a good dummy. That, you're changing your story now. I'll give you the dummy, but not I'll give you the dummy, but not the sidestep. Very good. Cheers, Cherry. Cheers, Bob. The Guinness Six Nations Championship. Live on Virgin Media One and Virgin Media Player.